So continuing on here with our rock and boulder structure, what we want to start to do now is kind of define the overall um, rock, stone, and boulder structure on here. So I've got a left arm here. I'm going to rename my the original layer that I did here. I'm just going to double click on that. Left leg base is fine. And now what we want to do is start to work with our little base forms here. So you can see that we just have these base structures worked in here. We're going to focus on a couple of tools that are really nice for bringing in some kind of hard surface effects or some nice kind of chipped or kind of um, uh, a nice solid sculpted feature on a stone here. Primarily the ones that I want to work with here, uh, the scrape tool is really powerful for kind of chipping away or giving this kind of planar kind of uh, stone-like surface. The flatten tool is excellent for giving flattened um, areas. You can combine different areas together to get kind of a crease or a seam. And then with the pinch tool, you can really tighten or sharpen a, uh, um, an edge or a, a crease there as well. And then we're going to build uh, our own little custom tool. As well, we can use the wax tool again to work with this. The wax tool is great for using the inverse with a, a hard fall off uh, to give some kind of pounded um, effects on there. So let's first start off with the scrape here. The one thing that I want to do is I think we could start working on this, this level of subdivision. That's fine. I'm actually going to subdivide this. Shift D is the hot key. I'm going to bring them up one more level here so we can start to kind of chip away at these stones here. So let's create a new layer. And with our scrape tool, I'm going to use this default fall off here just to look at what is happening with that fall off. You can see that it has a sharp finish here. Okay, so we're just a bold and a sharp finish on there. That's fine. I'm going to leave the strength at 100. Everything else I'll leave default. The one thing that I'm changing here is the stamp spacing. By all means, leave it uh, simple. I'll show you the difference here. Let's put it down to uh, the defaults around six. So let's leave it at that. If I start to rub that in, you'll see that we kind of get these nice things here. So if you're going to do a lot of kind of rubbing with the scrape brush to give this kind of chipped or kind of hammered look to it, then it's excellent. Another thing that we can do here, though, is space it out a bit. Keep it up around here and then just start to sculpt. You see that we're getting this kind of pounded chipped effect in there. Adjust the brush size. And definitely as you're doing this, adjust your brush size, right? You'll get very different effects on there. I'm going to bring this back down so that I can work on one specific area on here and really define this kind of hammered chipped out area. So what the scrape brush is doing you can almost think of it as the way the wax brush is working on the inverse there, removing material. This is kind of doing a combination of a flatten and an inverse wax brush. It is kind of removing material and, and kind of planing the surface out here a bit as well. Um, the tool is really powerful when you start adding stamps as well to it. Some of the basic stamps that we have in here that you can work with, there's some, it, obviously add your own stamps. This simple little square and these rectangles work well to get some nice different effects on there. I'm just going to stick with the default fall off effect that I'm getting on here and maybe randomize this guy a bit. So the idea is that we're just kind of chipping these stone edges off here. Um, kind of make it you know, a little more hammered hammered down. Um, I'm, I'm going a little bit overboard with the number of little stone chips on here. We don't need to do that on every stone. But by all means play with the settings and the other thing is we don't want every single stone on here maybe this chipped or hammered some of the stones some of the rocks and boulders might be quite rounded or kind of softened edges on it so uh, let's definitely try to keep everything randomized but throughout the process of building up these rocks and the boulders some a creature like this with all of these different structures that he's comprised of you're going to want to go back and constantly tweak. You're going to see things as you go along that maybe you want something a little more hardened edged or maybe you want something a little more softened or maybe that isn't randomized enough so you want to go back and, and change that. So that's, that's all I'm doing here. With this boulder here, I'm going to grab my wax brush, go into my fall off, use a nice big fall off here, a nice big wax thing, uh, uh, brush setting. And just inverse, I can kind of literally use this as a, a hammer. I'm just hitting the, the tablet here to hammer that down in there so we can see the overall shape that we're getting from that. 
And then if I switch back to my scrape tool, I can take those little hammer areas there and kind of work them into the overall structure of this weathered or hammered or chipped down stone. There we go. So same, same idea as what we were doing originally when we were working with the form and structure. This time we're working with the base form and structure of the definition of the rock. We're going to detail these rocks later. We're going to put grit, cracks, different things on there using a variety of different techniques. But for now, we're just defining. You know, these guys are different rocks and stone features that he's, he's built out of. Now let's use a bigger fall off on here and really kind of hammer this stone in. Maybe cut it almost like a wedge kind of cut that we can get as we work with that. And we'll break up these edges on here. If a stone's going to have a really sharp face, it doesn't mean the whole stone, of course, needs to be chipped or hammered to, to be completely sharp. You can certainly have, um, you know, you take a little hike through, uh, through nature, you'll find stones, rocks, boulders that have been kind of cleaved in half, right? You'll find a rounded stone that's been kind of cracked or cleaved. So you could certainly have something like this guy here with a large you know, kind of wedge, planar wedge going on here along the edge. And then the rest of it's quite rounded, right? Maybe we'll build a little bit of an edge in here though too. There we go. And now if we switch to our flatten brush, that's where this can help us out. We can really start to build in that kind of flatten structure. If I just rub it back and forth, work with your brush size to bring kind of the plane that you're working with in there. And then those edges, I can take the pinch brush, my pinch tool here, and sharpen those edges right up a bit. So we get more of a sharpened effect on there. That's fine. Let's continue on with our scrape tool here. Um, and then what we want to do is I'm going to build um, a very random, a random scrape tool that I've built here. I'm going to show how I built that and how that can come in handy. So I'm just quickly kind of polishing this stone down using my scrape brush. Again, my stamp spacing is low. So I'm, I'm getting this fluid kind of result. And then I'll move that up against here. So I'm spacing it out more. So I'm getting a more kind of spaced out, kind of blotted look as I go on there. And this again, we're looking for kind of a shin structure here. So I'm not afraid of, of making this a little bit kind of pointed or crested along the edge there. There we go, that's fine. Again, I'm moving, I'm not moving overly quick here, but there's certainly no reason to just sit around on it and uh, polish each stone up completely accurately. As I said, once we really start detailing these stones, we'll probably finesse them a little more. But right now we want to try to get that kind of rock look and keep coming out looking at this knee is too bulbous here. It sticks out too far as well. So just scrape that down. Maybe work it in a little bit. I think the idea with the knee is that it is going to be a little more weathered. So I'm not really going for really sharp uh, hardened features on those edges. Something maybe a little bit more weathered down here. That's fine. So you see I'm just quickly moving with this scrape brush. I can switch to my flatten tool as well to really give that effect. Flatten kind of look. This guy here, let's use the flatten to kind of plane him out a bit. It's a little bit sticking out a little bit too much. Okay, let's go back to our scrape and work that in. That's nice. That'll do. And then what we want to do while we're working here is, again, work with different variations, right? Some randomness as we go. Not everything, again, has to be this chipped, hammered, uh, sharpened edge stone. Some of these rounded stones down by the feet actually make a little more sense for the most part they would be kind of worn uh, down in more of a, a softened, kind of physically weathered fashion more than a, uh, a chipped fashion. I, I think certainly there would be a couple more chips on there, but the 
the bottoms there maybe are a little more rounded, kind of stone-like. Or, or I shouldn't say stone-like, um, rounded stone kind of the look. Put a little bit of a wedge on that guy. And let's increase our brush size as we work here. Kind of blast that in a bit. So we're kind of keeping, I'm keeping the edge of the feet here, the edge of these, you know, so-called toes. Uh, a little bit more rounded there. You know, the idea of, of rocks, if you look at mountains, very jagged um, mountains are actually considered, you know, to be like a young mountain. Everything's very formed and structured and sharp. Over time, as they weather away, they get very kind of rounded down, right? Do, through physical, chemical processes, different things like that. So that's what I want to do with these stones here. Keep them, you know, somewhat, a little bit of common sense to it if there's a little bit of common sense. Not that there's much common sense to this guy here. He's just a creature. Um, but, um, you know, keep something that's a little bit believable. His feet, his knees, his elbows... Uh, different parts of them that are, are weathered or worn down from, from use, right? 